What's going on guys? Sir Wayne here. Welcome back to the channel. So today we are going to talk about in particular in units. Okay. I don't know anything on YouTube where uh, a Call of War YouTuber has went over units in particular. Maybe there is, maybe there's not. But if there is, I'm probably, I'm pretty sure it's pretty old. So, and not exactly up to date. So uh, what I'm going to do is just, that's what I'm going to go into is every single unit in, in the game. And it's going to be uh, pretty costly and I'm going to try to stay uh, focused and on track with each and every one of these. Uh, I am going to give my opinion on what I use and what I don't use and what I think is good and what I don't think is good. But just take it with a grain of salt. You know, if I say your unit's not good, the, your favorite unit, my apologies, it's not that your unit is bad necessarily. It's just the fact that I don't use it because it doesn't fit my play style. So just take that with a grain of salt, okay? Now, some units are just, they're just not really that bad, but the units I pick in particular, I feel like other units or these particular units do the job better than the other uh, units. So, so um, I'm also, towards the end, I'll try to give you a little bit of philosophy uh, on the basics uh, if, if I have time. But anyway, let's get into it. Uh, first off, we are going to go with the infantry tab. And I'm not going to go over doctrines. Uh, that's been covered in several videos. Uh, I have a, a video over each one of those, so we're not going to cover those. So militia is being the first one. So if you click it, it shows all the levels up at top. You click information. It gives you a brief description of it. Their health up there at the top and the heart. You see their strength, they get a plus 50% right there in the forest. Their attack versus infantry is 2.3 and 3.5 defense, okay? So as you scroll down, you'll see their production cost, their daily upkeep. Now, I'm not going to go over this in every single one of them, but uh, I'm just going to go over it uh, in this first one as far as like all the little statistics. But as you see, their attributes, their strength versus unarmored units, or uh, 2.3 attack and 3.5 as you've seen up here. But notice that it's different for the against the light armor. And notice that it's different against the heavy armor. See it's got heavy armor 0 0.9 attack. And, which is absolutely horrible. <laughs> Don't attack heavy units guys. I have 1.3 defense against heavy armor. Planes, obviously they can't attack planes. So uh, unless they're grounded. Uh, 1.8 defense. Uh, so ships, subs, buildings, morale, uh, what they do damage-wise. So uh, their terrain bonus, uh, all they there you have, you see their HP in the terrain, which is 12 at sea, 17 on the rest. Speeds 24, 24, 12, 24, 24, 44. Notice on the hills they get 25% boost in strength, as well as mountains and 50% in force. That uh, each bonus is different for each unit, so. You guys make sure you pay attention to that. Uh, speed on enemy territory is at 50%. That is all of your units. Uh, your view range 70% or 70. Um, and your stealth unit hidden if not fighting. Okay, so it's a stealth unit. So, um, you know, the stealth units can't be seen. And they can only be seen by uh, scouting units. And we'll get into that later as we cover the other units. But the view range, which which allows you to see, obviously, you know, the other units. Um uh, what's coming in incoming as well. So, you know, pay attention to that in some particular units uh, Like I said, I won't go over production cocks and daily cost other than it is a pretty stealthy or a pretty I'm reading the description here. It, it is a pretty uh, cost cheap unit um, I don't use militia. It's just my play style guys. I'm more of an attacker not a defender um, And personally, I think infantry is a lot better. Anyway, moving on. So here we are to the infantry. Infantry is very, very similar to militia. Um, it's going to be uh, uh, one more thing on militia. Militia is really, really strong if you're going up against NPCs um, and just really building this out of nothing and running and just uh, defending against NPCs. And, uh, you know, I don't care, and most people don't care what your NPC stat is. So just running the, these things into uh, your opponent with, you know, stacks of 5, 10, or whatever, just defending, is a great tool. Uh, that is a primary defensive unit. Another primary defensive unit is infantry again. Uh, 
as you see their stats there I'm sure you can uh, read the stats after me calling them out earlier I hope uh, you can you can see the production cost their daily upkeep uh, their attributes uh, this unit does uh, fairly better than militia uh, it's also uh, further more upgradable uh, than the, the militia uh, and you can go through all these here and you know you know click which ones you want to compare stats with and you know if you were going to compare you know level 3 militia I'd compare it to level 4 infantry uh, just compare all that you know if you're going to compare which one you want to go with um, yeah, which in particular unit uh, I also want to say is you know uh, <clears throat> yeah th this is just a, a mainly defensive unit they get a boost for 20% mountains 20% forest and 50% in the urban so definitely want to keep it in your cities essentially if, you, if possible uh, that's where they're going to be essentially most effective uh, it's a very uh, you can make that a very start a good starter unit it's a starter unit so moving on motorized infantry motorized infantry is one of the you know some of the core strengths of axis uh, it is very fast they get a boost uh, you know like i said i'm gonna try to stay away from the doctrines uh, this is a very good attacking unit uh, against infantry uh, not against anything else as you can see uh, they cost quite a bit of manpower quite a bit of food um, I use them because uh, food is pretty abundant in my uh, my my strategic builds, strategic builds, <laughs> my builds, <laughs> strategic builds. <laughs> but uh, they get a you know you see their boost down there, planes as well as in the city they get a little bit of boost as well. So uh, really nice unit. I enjoy them very. Also they're also very good in. Um, uh, moving along empty territory and taking empty territory uh, very quickly um, as you can see down here just moving it across the territory just taking it even if it has a one of you know it take, you know taking territories like you would in AC which we'll get into that later but moving on so mechanized infantry so mechanized infantry is a little bit uh, more balanced in the defensive aspect of motor you know as far as against motorized infantry that's what it's generally compared to against is what's better is motorized infantry or mechanized infantry uh, your your uh your infantry like all your stats or attack and defense are all equal so it makes it just as good defensively as it does attacking uh which mora which um uh, if you look in as well it has uh fairly decent uh, anti-air stats as well which is definitely something to look into and consider if you're not running really strong uh, or you know if you're not running a lot of SP anti-air or anti-air in general um, this will give you quite a bit of boost too so take that in consideration as well also take into consideration that uh, it does uh, cost a little bit more food um, I think they have less goods I think it is it may be rare but they cost oil more oil and I believe manpower like I said you guys can compare that how you want um, also you'd have to you know research the motorized infantry to get to the mechanized infantry so there is also that uh, it was a really hard fought for me whether to use a mechanized infantry or motorized infantry but consider I play axis I get the boost for motorized infantry and you know uh, uh, the f the food I believe was the biggest ordeal. No, no, it wasn't the food. It was something else. Oh, I wanted. Um, no, I can't remember. I really can't remember. I think I used mechanized with allies, and I used motorized for axes. But they're very, very close. Very, very close. It it took me a long time to figure it out. Uh, stormtroopers, commandos. Okay, so commandos. This is another unit that I don't necessarily use very much. And like I said, it's not like a I think it's bad or not or or it's not that I think it's bad because I don't think it's bad it's just in my builds you got to pick and choose you know I mean, in your builds you got to pick and choose what you want so um, and, and what they do and my opinion commandos are uh, generally speaking uh, a very strategic situation situational uh, unit so and uh, they can they're very stealthy 
and they can't be picked up unless by motorized infantry and interceptors with the same or higher level as well as by espionage. So spies. Commandos are hidden in all territories land when not fighting. They can only be revealed by armored units. Armored cars, oh, armored cars, motorized infantry interceptors with the same or higher level as well as by espionage. So, so it is a stealth unit. So uh, take that in consideration when choosing something like this. This commando is a very annoying unit. If it is high level, you know, uh, which is in the later stages of the game and you can't see it, it can be very obnoxious if you don't have an interceptor or something to see it to it because then you can't attack it, you know. So, uh, and they can just sneak into your territory and just take your stuff and it's so obnoxious. So, um, just be aware of that, uh, you know, but mostly it's used for um, uh, attacking, not defending. It is not a defending unit. So, if you're using it, attack, attack, attack. Good, really good against light armor, good against uh, unarm uh, unarmed, you know. Uh, infantry units uh, so when I say infantry units I don't mean actually infantry I just mean unarmored units I probably should just say unarmored units so um, uh, and as well as fairly uh, pretty good against heavy armor too 6.9 but uh, uh, for a level 135 health that's pretty good 50% uh, mountains plus and 50% forest so it's a, you know, that's your special forces right there, the commandos. And um, um, very, you know, you don't get it until a day here. Allies get it a little bit earlier, I believe. Um, so definitely more of their style, I believe. But definitely a very good unit. Moving on, paratroopers. Um, paratroopers is another situational unit, which I do not use. This is a has been a very popular unit and is uh i still see people using it especially in uh all air builds and what i mean by all air builds is like they do, they don't use anything but planes and they use paratroopers to drop in and take your cities that are empty it's very obnoxious uh their way to combat it you know they're very weak into um uh, interceptors and such um so do i recommend using them i said like i said they're situational um you can put a build together it seems to be very uh it definitely catches a lot of people off guard um well some people um it just depends like once i see it once i see pair i once i see, see a single paratrooper um blocking against it so uh, but it's a very, very, very strong unit. They have two different forms, you know, their plane form and then their actual form that when they actually touch down and hit the ground. And as you can see, they're very, uh, fairly strong units. Um, like I said, I'm not going to go too much into this because I really don't know like a whole lot of ins and outs about the paratroopers. It's just all about you know, shooting them in behind enemy lines and taking cities and airstrips. They use them a lot to take airstrips and cause your planes to, to, to land. And that really sucks. But anyway, so that will do it with the infantry uh, column. Moving on to the ordnance uh, column. I'm also not going to go cover uh, the factories that you need to build these in. Uh, you can just read that or check uh, one of my other videos that I cover that in. We're going to go cover anti-tank. So anti-tank is... Yeah, exactly what you think it is. So it's against armor units. Anything that's armor comes in, uh, deal with it. Very good against in the forest as well as urban. It's where you want to keep it in the urban or in the forest. Um, you know, you definitely, if you want to play it in the forest, play it, play it somewhere that's going to be strategically benef beneficial to you. Uh, I do use this unit and I've been using it uh, more often than not. Um, well, I do use it situational like um if i'm sharing borders with somebody for example and i don't i don't trust them but uh like if they're like relatively and, and then like let's say they have like a lot of armor which a lot of players play a lot of armor you play it start placing some of these anti-tanks into cities nearby and um you know put five ten whatever 
and just start packing it up, packing it up. And if you can put bunkers in there as well, that'd be nice. But especially, you know, anti-tanks as well as start putting in meat shields. But, uh, you know, building up that health bar and everything for the stack that you're going to build. But a lot of anti-tanks and then, you know, ho hopefully... Uh, they'll go in and smack those anti-tanks and uh and it's a stealth unit too so if you have the sucker at like really high level uh they don't see it unless they have like an ac or something you know armored car or an interceptor or something um and then they come running into that city and you got like highly level anti-tanks and they just obliterate that armor. Anti-tanks are so good against armor. It is ridiculous. It is aggravating. You want to upset somebody, get a bunker, put anti-tanks in it, high level anti-tank units in it. You don't even got to do a bunker, but you know, if you do, it's just extra craziness and you want to see i don't even care if it's medium tanks for the axis you will see those sucker disappear <laughs> but anyway really good unit artillery so this is artillery units uh as its own category of itself um this one in particular artillery is this art artillery is best against armored units light and heavy armored units um not so much against unarmored units but they will they are usable think about it you're doing damage you know you see 1.7 damage that's not a lot but put 10 of them in there that's a lot you know that's 12 13 14 early game that's really strong so i typically i always build these every single game it never fails um it's just really really good uh just just get that free damage in so um anyway moving on SP, uh, SP artillery, uh, the only thing different than this is it's on wheels. So it's, you know, going to be, uh, the production cost and everything's going to be a little bit different. Uh, but the speed's going to be a little bit better. You're going to want to put this in your armored, uh, stacks, not your infantry stacks and just blast away. Again, these are going to be for, you know, primary going to do better against light and heavy armor, but they do get a, a little bit better, uh, against than than plain armored. Uh, plain artillery but if you look at this uh the level two artillery which is going to be available the same day your sp artillery is you know and it could be uh you know as you know pretty close to the same you know you could just upgrade them if you wanted to or whatever but you know unless you're like allies then sp uh artillery is going to get that boost so it's definitely going to be a better way to go um uh, as well, if you play in 100s, and, and or like if you're playing 22s, like regular artillery will do like all game long, essentially. Um, you could do the SP artillery, but it's not really necessary with a small map. So uh, take that into consideration. Uh, next one is anti-air. So anti-air, um, I, I don't hardly, I, I rarely ever build these. Um, if I, if I know I'm going to fight somebody uh, or feel like I'm going to fight somebody that's got a lot of air, especially starting out early game, I'll put these in there. Um, and then, like, I'll, I'll uh, upgrade them all at once, you know, to, like, level 3 or level 4 or whatever. I'll just research to level 3 or level 4, and then I'll just upgrade them all the way to level 3 or 4 or whatever. Uh, but, it, like I said, it's situational uh, as far as, like, if I ever build them, which is typically never. Um but, you know, if you were going to play something like Common Turn or something like that, it would be uh, more central than it would be uh, building something else. As Common Turns are more of an uh, infantry, uh, unarmored, um, an armored style uh, doctrine. So, um, it also does very well against heavy armor, uh, surprisingly. And obviously against air. Um, and not, not horrible health, but not good either next moving up is sp anti-air you're going to put these stacks in uh put these in your armored uh divisions so they don't quite and and try to up and upgrade them to keep them from uh you know uh taking like keep your armored units from dying to planes which that does happen i assure you so stick these in them and then at least at the very least if they do die to planes you will do some damage to those planes so um you get 50 percent uh increase in heals and urban 
25% uh, urban, which, uh, like I said, just use these for, you know, protection, nothing else, you know. I feel like, you know, if you're, like, for example, if you're using medium tanks and you're crashing into something, if you can drop these SP anti-airs out of the fight, you know, generally, generally speaking, unless the situation is different and have your tanks or whatever, you know, plow the way, your actual armor plow the way into, into, uh, killing whatever you got to kill and then remerge later, remerge your stack later with the anti-air. Moving on to tanks. All right, here we are. First tank, not, it's an anti-air, it's an AC, also known as armored car. So this is a scout unit. It can reveal anything with the same level or lower. Here's my biggest uh, thing is it really allows you to see if you look down here at the bottom 120 view range Anything that's got artillery in it. You want one of these in it and be honest with you You really need to put them in your stacks your medium stacks and stuff like that 50% um, more on planes uh, This is mainly a defensive unit against uh, infantry uh, so, But we don't use it as that we use it for two things one taking territory that nothing is in two uh, using it to see people's units, hidden units, as well as uh, allowing your artillery. Like if you look at your artillery, which I forgot to mention this, you uh, scroll down and you see your view range is 70, attack range is 50. So you would use that to hit it, uh, but it would be more like... more su suitable for the railroad guns as it, it has a really really good fire range so this also has good you could see when you fire but like armor cars you want to see what you're firing at i mean if you're firing at you know you know if your stack is really outmatched and out of artillery then you're not going to want to go and fire at it so ac is good for that as well as uh you know defense against infantry um taking empty land that sort of thing Moving on, the light tank. So, the light tank is a pretty fast unit. It's a very cheap unit, uh, level one. I keep it level one, I never upgrade it. Um, you know, that's gonna be different if you're gonna play like, you know, as Panasia. But me, I hardly ever upgrade it, and I just uh, give me like a level tank, uh, factory one, and then build these, and just shoot in to take NPCs out or you know to defend against npcs while my main forces are dealing with uh, a more a player of some sort um, they're they're decent against infantry uh, everything's better attacking obviously uh, decent against light units but you know mostly you're going to want to use this against like unarmored cars or random and acs stuff like that sp anti-air things of that nature uh, they're really not going to be, uh, they can create damage if you like stack them 10 up and run them in and stuff. And that's uh, really, really strong. So let me, let me turn my notifications on real quick. Or do not disturb. So just in case something doesn't come in. Medium tanks. All right. It's probably one of my favorite units. Let's move this on to, should we do level three? Yeah, level three. Um, Normally, normally I put my medium tanks to level three or level four. As you can see, that there's the Panther there. Now this stat's going to be a lot more because I'm used to looking at level four or level ones. So you're going to see the stats going to be quite a bit more. The health's going to be quite a bit more. The speed's going to be quite a bit more. Um, but as you can see, they they do uh, decent, uh, pretty good damage, decent damage. Let's go back to one. I know it's an awesome pick of that one, but let's just go back to one. So, does decent damage against unarmored units, but their main focus is going to be against light armor. Um, as you upgrade them to like level 4 and such, they're just going to decimate everything essentially in their path as long as your axes. Um, so, uh, also a bit faster for me as I'm the axis. View range 70%. Um, it actually might help out with artillery, I'm not sure. But anyway, uh, moving on. Heavy, heavy tanks. Uh, oh, that Tiger. Oh, a pants of six. All right. So, uh, it's a slower unit, slower tank, but higher health. Um, you know, obviously going to do more damage to light units. Uh, good damage against heavy units. Good against unarmored. You know, uh, fair you. 
if I in mind, none of these tanks do good against air. <laughs> so make sure you're protecting them, guys. 50% on planes, and that's all the tanks, I believe. Uh, so, yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. I don't use this unit. It's just really slow. Um, and maybe if I was playing as common turn, I'd use it. But other than that, I just... I just don't use it. Um, tank destroyer, the infamous tank destroyer. Oh, this is an Axis worst uh, nightmare. It really is. It's got stealth, hidden in forest. It is so obnoxious. They get a 50% boost in the forest. And I've got decimated by like four of these. At, or, yeah, four of these at like a level two or three. And then I came in with like uh, 10 level four or five four probably four medium tanks came in and smacked this dude and it just tore me to bits man it just I, if it wasn't for my anti if it wasn't for my air my air superiority i would have just been decimated so uh, that stack was actually knocked out for the whole game i believe so um didn't have time to heal um it was just really really but i did get them i did save them but this tank destroyer nonetheless super super deadly uh th this is like the core strength to the allies build uh when facing against the axis in my opinion because they get they get a, a discount for building it as well on top of all their discounts <laughs> so it's just a super super strong super strong tank or tank destroyer as you can see, it is high levels against your heavy armor. 8.7 at level 1. I mean, so... Uh, imagine, you know, dealing with that. Like I said, it's hidden in forest and stuff. Oh my goodness. 50% increase in forest. 25% in urban. So you can even stick these sucker in, in, in cities. And they will just decimate medium tanks. This is my kryptonite. It really is. It sucks so bad. <laughs> it really sucks so bad. Uh, they, they, that alone uh, had me implementing artillery, more artillery into my stacks as, you know, as running more artillery stacks. And uh, But anyway, moving on, that's the end of the tanks. Moving on to air. Now this is my most hated but most beloved um, I hate air i really do but you have to have it you have to play it there's no way fans or butts interceptors uh pretty basic uh they just fight other uh other planes they deal with other planes they're your fighters uh they also scout they reveal anything units you know anything i say scout you know your unit their unit their level will scout anything of their level or lower so Having good interceptors is definitely the name of the game. Uh, there's their attack range, all that good stuff. It's a carrier-based aircraft. You're going to get a better view range if you're like Pan-Asia. You got your speed. What it does against that, uh, you know, it's pretty basic against, you know, in the Axis. They don't get any boost for that. Moving on, tactical bombers. So these suckers are... Uh, against for unarmored use mostly but they can be used for armored because you know all tank like tanks have just horrible anti-air so you can use them as well this is the uh, blood sweat strength of allies as far as like you know they when they're running like all when they're running like their air battle like people are running those builds where it's just all air force this is the cream right here the the tactical bomber because they get the I think they get a range boost and they get an increase on damage and stuff and it's just super super strong and they get it day one yeah they get it day one too the tactical bomber so um I mean that's just pretty much it I mean that's what it, it, it's, it's used against infantry right unarmored unit unarmored units moving on attack bombers so uh this is I want to see the the Ju <laughs> 87 Stuka dive bomber. All right, so this is uh, the for armored units. As you can see, uh, they get significant uh, damage against light units and armored, heavy armored. That's what they're for. They do do decent damage against ships, um, and they do do a little bit better, fare a little bit better, I believe, against airplanes than the other would do. Uh, tactical bombers but they don't have as good health so at the same time they don't 
So, um, but mainly used for destroying armor units, and it is very effective um, in doing so. So, strategic bombers. So, this is uh, for destroying buildings, uh, more or less, you know, airfields. You know, you want to get the, the, the your opponent's planes to land. This is a thing that do it, take out their airfields. You can also use them to destroy cities, um, you know, hurt their economy if you wanted to go that route. Uh, if you're playing as allies, they get like uh, an extended reach uh, range. Uh, so this is really good in that perspective. Um, I use them mostly just to take out air airfields. Uh, be wary of the interceptor when it comes to using this sucker. Um, very, very wary. Um, but um, they do some morale damage, uh, but they're mostly used for just destroying buildings. So just take that in consideration. Uh, that's what they're used for. They're used to, uh, I use these instead of, instead of paratroopers. Naval bombers. Naval bombers are so strong. Like level three and higher naval bombers are so strong against like air, non-cruisers. Non which is the anti-air on on in the sea? Uh, these suckers, you put these, you put ten of these suckers together, level three, they will decimate navies. They will just destroy them, wreck carnage. So uh, that's going to do it for the air force. And it's pretty just plain and simple. Uh, but anyway, moving on. So back to navy. All right. So navy is more of a. Uh, Depending on your situation, it can be very non-essential. I mean, if you're like a country that has is, that's landlocked in the beginning, you're obviously not going to do any navy whatsoever, uh, research-wise. So, um, but anyway, so let's get into it. Destroyers. Destroyers are among the fastest ships, you know, in the sea. Period. Plain and simple. They're the fastest. So, um, they are they are used to deal with sh submarines. Okay, their kryptonite is against cruisers and battleships. So, but they're just there to protect your fleet. So, stick them in there to um, stick them in there to protect your fleet. They're also scouts, so they will see, you know, submarines. Uh, that's what they're like. Obviously, their main um, asset is, as well as the ability to just, you know, they can deal with like. Uh, they can deal like with like uh, infantry units or you know other land units trying to cross over the sea and get to your ports or whatever you know station them there and they can deal with it but i prefer submarines for this but anyway moving on so the next up is going to be the submarine so submarine is by far the cheapest uh naval uh ship and it gets a boost for axis so if you're Axis, you probably would want to consider using these rather than using destroyers, especially starting out. Submarines are a very good starter unit as well uh, to disrupt uh, land units coming in and trying to take your cities or whatever if you're near the coast or just trying to land. Um, you can use these subs to just wipe that out. And they can be hidden, you know, from everything except destroyers. Uh, and, of course, you know, there's that whole... Uh, whether it's your level, level or lower, right? They, they have to be the level of the sub or lower. Um, not a very fast unit. Health is also not very good. But, uh, uh, but you know, it's for, you know, cheap, you know, hitting land units in the water and sinking stuff, convoys. So it's just not, uh, I also keep those, generally speaking, at level one. It's not a very high priority for me. Because uh, I do have naval bombers as well. So if my subs can't hit whatever ship it is, my naval bombers can. Uh, I, I do use subs quite often uh, to deal with anything like that. But I don't invest a lot into them or into my navy, generally speaking. Uh, if I do I'll, if I do decide to go with a navy, I will just drop subs altogether and not use them. Uh, moving on, cruisers. So cruisers are uh, anti-air. That's what they are. They do have artillery. They do. They can hit you with artillery. Their range is not as good as battleships, but um, 
they will like you put these in the stack and people will think twice about putting naval bombers and hovering them over you so just you know uh, but that's that's pretty much it they will die to cruiser or they will die to subs that is for sure so but they are very vital to be in your stack if you're going to someone's shorelines and trying to make a foothold so anyway moving on moving right along next is the battleship probably everybody's favorite ship <laughs> yeah, especially you know if you're new uh, it's definitely it's super it is the best artillery in the game uh, essentially massive guns good good range uh, they die to subs <laughs> um, so make sure you cut your destroyers with you they can they can turn any city into nothing you know any port if you if you're trying to land you know your your d-day invasion whatever wherever it's going to be these guys are crucial in uh, doing that they will provide you know with that artillery and they don't have to be really high level either to just do massive damage as you can see they you know this is only level one but if you have like you know level three level two level three and then or you'll have like four or five of them in the stack you know i like to do 10 oh yeah 10 baby let's overdo it and uh you know think about it 10 10 times 3.5 against unarmored that's 30 35 boom one hit boom 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 and they have really good range so view range is 90 attack range is 70 so really good they're not the fastest thing in the water uh it actually goes uh, destroyer cruiser and i think battleship and submarine last i think uh aircraft carriers also a slower unit i really don't know a whole lot about the aircraft carrier uh, i don't use it um you can use it to put planes on obviously you can uh, you know depending on this level and the level of whatever units you're trying to put on there uh, they're very good for scouting like you know put naval bombers on there and then send them out to scout you know convoys and stuff like that it's very useful if you're going all out uh, if you really want a navy and and that's cool that's fine i mean if you're you know let's say you're in new zealand or japan or something you want aircraft carriers go for it i mean i would you know if i was pan asia you get a boost for naval bombers so it's a uh, it's not a bad unit at all uh, i just don't have the resources to fund it because the way i play i i i'd rather have uh you know, there's a point comes first versatility. You know, you don't want to have like I have every unit unlocked at level one. No, I'd rather have, you know, a couple units at level three or four than every unit at level one. So you just got to pick and choose with your resources. Next is a transport ship. This is just, you know, if you're moving your land units across the sea, this is what's going to get them there. And uh, you can see the speed down below. You can increase this and increase their speed maybe health as well i'm not sure hold on yeah your health as well so um you know take that you know in consideration if you're going across if you if your supply line is like all the way across the ocean you know you're going to want to increase that transport ship so you can get there faster moving on to the final category secret okay so rocket artillery rocket artillery is is artillery except the uh, except it is for infantry it does this most of its damage in unarmored units not uh, light and heavy armored division so unarmored units uh, and that and they're really strong with common turn they use that a lot um, so and it's pretty busted <laughs> but uh, you know there's not really much to explain it's it's infantry it's, it's, it's for the infantry uh i just prefer regular artillery but that's just me because the way the game is being played is generally speaking unless you're common turn they they use armor majority of the time allies is armored axes is armored so if you're dealing with mostly armored players what should you use i'll let you be the judge of that so sp rocket artillery um it's the same thing does best against unarmored units not so well not as good with light and heavy armor 
Um, also take into consideration that this is going to, there's only two levels of that, and that's only available after day six for us. So it's going to be faster if you're common turn. But anyway, moving right along. Real world gun. So the uh, Gustav gun, <laughs> so to speak. So the Gustav gun only has one, one level, one level only. This thing is used to be extremely broken uh, when they came out with the new 1.5, the doctrines and everything. But after, you know, they had hit it, hit it. When I mean hit it, I mean they nerfed it. So it's not as good as it was. It's a lot of manpower, a lot of iron, a lot of oil, a lot of rare, a lot of money for one unit. So it's just super expensive. So be very, very wary of that. It is ungodly slow. It is so slow. Uh, it does good damage against everything, uh, especially in stacks. Uh, so slow, so slow. Attack range is 100, though. The view range is on 70. So make sure you get in there with your AC and whatnot and get that full view range. This thing can hit, hit somebody without, you know, they even know they're getting hit. <laughs> Unless they're looking at the health bar or whatnot. Uh, you know, they could not see it. They cannot see it and literally get fired on by a railroad gun. So, in that sense, it's super. It's pretty. It's pretty good in that manner. But it's so slow to get to the front line. Like unless you're in like a really like dogged fight where it's just not really moving. You know, this this unit can be can be somewhat situational. And another situational aspect of it is. Like if you're, if you're like, there are some people who will put all their units in one city and bunker it up, bring in 10 railway guns and blow it up. Just keep hitting it. And it will do so good against like, as you see the buildings, it does some really strong damage against the buildings. So just keep hitting that bunker with it. Keep hitting that bunker with it. You don't want to run the units into that bunkered city, you know, that fortified city with possibly anti-tanks and all kinds of mess in there so just blast them with these real ray guns uh, typically what i would do is i would just go around it uh, but you sometimes you find some sometimes you find these players you know uh, that it's not very far along in the game well let's say it's mid game or whatever and they just want to be a douche and then they bunker up in one city or two cities and then they just go, I dare you to break it. Come run your armor in to me and see what happens. And then you just take a whole lot of losses, which, you know, the railroad guns to take, take care of that. So, uh, rockets. So, the fl or is this flying bomb? I don't use flying bomb. Uh, flying bombs, uh, is, as far as I know, it's just mainly used for, uh, it's got decent damage against unarmored and light and heavy the, the problem with the rockets and the flying bomb and i'm just going to cover all these together um, it can't be controlled like you don't fire them on a moving unit like if you fire them on something and then that unit decides to move you missed it you know you just wasted whatever it was to produce it you know and that's the same thing with the uh, you know rocket uh rockets so uh it's the same thing if you miss it you miss it you know if they move it you miss it uh they used to use rockets a lot to just destroy airfields but uh Batro had uh nerfed it and moved them and gave them a boost more towards buildings which is historically accurate they were used for uh more try to use for more of a morale approach not for a building they didn't have any like they didn't have any success in actually destroying buildings. So, you know, that was more of a morale effect. You know, it was just super, super scary. So, um, you know, from that standpoint, it was, you know, very, very effective. Um, they have really good range, especially like, you know, leveling up. Like you can really fire them from, from a long, way, long range. And now they can still destroy airfields. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying Bytro has tweaked it to where they don't do as much damage against buildings and you know they want you to use strategic bombers for buildings they're trying to make it more historical accurate it's what i think they're trying to do it's what it seems but anyway moving on 
Rocket fighters. Rocket fighters are so strong against uh, other planes. They're so fast. And, I mean, they only have two levels on this one. I don't know about the other doctrines. Um, but I don't use them um, because of the short range. And I just, you know, don't uh, waste my resources on it. Uh, down below are your atomic bomb. So, the atomic bomb is this is just the research to get to the atomic bomb so i mean as you can see you know, quite a bit of error uh, good quite a bit of money as well uh by the time it's available down to 18 it's not really going to be that you know that expensive but once you uh, uh undo that you get a nuclear bomber uh, does good damage but here's the problem if it gets shot down and it's a one use. Once you use it, it's done. It's gone forever. Um, and it's quite a bit of resources and manpower to do so. 13 rare, 13k in rare, 8.2 manpower. My lord, why do people build this? But anyway, so if you fire it at a stack, don't fire it at a stack with um, anti air because if you do, they'll just shoot, they'll typically just shoot down the, the atomic bomb or nuclear bomber. And then it was just a waste. All that manpower and resources for nothing. And then you just got to build another one. It's just, ugh. But uh, typically what they do is just fire in front of it or to the side of it or something so they don't hit the anti-air and they get the damage that way. But to me, it's just not enough damage for the resources that you get. And, you know, as you see, it's higher level up, higher level up. And you got to have all this, all this upgraded. And then, you know, let's see here. Check out the level three naval bomber. Oh, that looks cool. I like that. I forgot what that's called. That's D something. But anyway, so that's massive damage. Uh, where's the resources at? Okay, here we go. Nine point two manpower. All right, so still quite. I thought there'd be a whole lot more. It's not that much more as far as resources to build it. Now the nuclear rocket. Now this is like the nuclear blast it does not matter if it is if it is um uh if it is defended like it doesn't matter if there's s by or there's anti-air in it or not it does not matter it will hit it the stack it don't typically destroy it so like it really just depends uh, there's this is not like to me this is another way to like destroy a big city that's bunkered down with a huge stack it won't destroy everything which it should but it doesn't which is fine um, this is um, it's honestly not world war ii historical accurate i don't even know if it should even be in the game to be honest like i could see this one being in the game but i don't really see any other ones being in the game um, i don't know what Batra was thinking with these nuclear weapons maybe they were thinking you know they did just didn't want the game it's going that long and day 22 until you can get the nuclear rocket so typically you don't see these in 100s you really don't see these in smaller maps like 22s but you know like rush maps anytime maps are sped up you will see them you know like times four times six times ten you can see these more often because the day is so long and but how you can combat those is you just have smaller stacks you know and I played against people who used these. I, I played a, a 5e1, and two of them were using nuclear rockets. And it was a speed map times four. Uh, it's a 100 speed map. And I just, and I actually have a video on that if you wanted to see uh, the 5e1 video uh, that I had made where I had made smaller stacks essentially and just was able to just recreate more stacks and more stacks faster than they could create nuclear rockets. And, you know, and they were like so excited that they were just doing all this damage to my and they weren't even killing the stacks they were just doing enough damage to where they weren't optimal anymore but um they were just you know i was just able to get the win out resource them and even though they were getting kills they were losing their rocket they were using their nuclear rocket forever so i mean have all the fun you you know won't but i mean you weren't winning the war like that but that's going to do that for every unit in the game i had just covered i hope you guys enjoyed this please give me a like comment and subscribe let me know what your favorite units are and if you haven't joined my discord server
please feel free to add me at Sir Wayne, hashtag 7651. It'll be in the description below, and I'll add you to the channel. And feel free to play a game with me if you'd like to play a game with me. If you shoot me with a nuclear rocket, I will be a I will be upset with you. <laughs> no, I won't. I won't. I'm just kidding. But, but um, let me know what you guys think. I hope you guys enjoyed this. This is. I know this is normally for beginners, but you know, I just want to explain every single unit and how everything works essentially. So, hope you guys liked it. Thank you so much.